to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV, episode 56. Is that two in the pink, one in the stink? Is that what you're doing? The That's what you're hoping for. <laughs> L-V-I. That's 56, Roman numerals. Oh, man. As always, my co-host, Scott Johansson, and I am Jason Walker. Welcome to Model Club TV. 56. Yeah, we got nothing this episode, so we'll see you later. Yeah. Bye-bye. This one came up really quick, didn't it? Felt like we just had Joe, well, like, yesterday. Got a lot going on. Yeah, it has been a... We always say that, but you had a lot going on. So did I. Yours was far more important. Uh, Scott. And, um, I'm on steroids, just so everyone knows. So oh, um, That's upside down. There we go. Why, so what? I could go into a rage at any minute. Oh, the steroid rage. Nice. Yeah. I see you're drinking out of your Planet of the Apes cup. Mm -mm. What is it? That's not even funny. See, it might as well be Planet of the Apes. Found it at an antique store last weekend. Good. I hope you break it. I hope you knock it off your <laughs> I destiny. broke the last one. I broke the last one. I've been looking to rebuy it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Of course you did. Uh -huh. So, Scott, how oh, you care to explain yourself in these photographs? What photographs are those, Jason? Uh, Let me go to the slideshow. The photographs that say right next to where it says waiting on you, B-word. Oh. What would you like to explain, sir? Yeah, I would like to know uh, why are you Buzz Lightyear? Scott well, Lightyear. For those that don't read my Facebook. Which is a lot of us. Not many. Actually, most people do. <laughs> Um, my stepdaughter got married last week, this last Saturday. Congratulations. And it was kind of a, um, let's just call it a, um, not traditional wedding. Okay. We had people there, a few costumes. We had a few people there that I don't think they were meant to be costumes, but they were costumes to me, but. Can I pause a... you for a second? Yes. Do you have the right microphone hooked up? I don't know. No. Knew it. There we go. Ah! <laughs> All right. I'm not even going to edit that out because it's not. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. All They're right. Better. Yeah, that is so much anyway, better. My stepdaughter got married. A little bit of an untraditional wedding. And so, as a dad daughter dance, first of all, she was going to let me get out of it. Okay. Because I don't dance. Okay. But that doesn't surprise me. But okay. it was, uh, yeah, I'd like to see. I bet you're a big fancy dancer. I am a fancy so, dancer. Um, with your meat face on. So, would you stop putting that obscenity on the, on the screen, please? So, um, I'll be a choke. So, uh, <laughs> okay. So anyway, I, you know, everyone says, no, you should do it. Even though she says you can get out of it, you should do it. So I said, all right. So I had to pick out a dad daughter song. Uh huh. And because I'm a little bit of a contrarian like you are, I, I am wanted not something. A contrarian. That's, there you go. See, <laughs> evidence to the contrary. So anyway, you know, and, and being that I'm her. A stepdad and her real father had passed away when she was young. You know, I didn't want to go too over the top. So I came up with, you've got a friend in me from Toy Story. Oh, that is very and, sweet uh, of you. It's, about a for half the people that, that think you don't have a heart, this really changed my mind about you. So about a half an hour after I decided that, I get this brainstorm. Uh-oh. And say, well, wouldn't it be funny if I came out in a Buzz Lightyear costume <laughs> and dance with her like that? So I knew my wife would shut it down immediately. She would say, no. Okay. So I called her sister and say, hey, what do you think of this idea? <laughs> you circumvented Joy. And yeah, so she says, I think that would be a great idea and she would love it. So I said, okay. So I start looking into costumes and unfortunately it didn't come one size bigger. Uh, 
<laughs> this was the um and actually was, uh, it, it doesn't look that bad i thought it would be worse no so um they had uh large extra large um double extra large and brian clark and this was the brian <laughs> clark size and uh so um so i picked it up if i was much bigger it wouldn't fit but it it fit now let me tell you something about these costumes just so you know don't for, ever think you're going to get away I'll with win. okay yeah don't ever think you're going to get away with not wearing something under these costumes because they're very see-through so when i first tried it on and walked what out if show, you kind of want that like you want you, my, know, you my, got a kid's party lined up you're like well, i'm gonna oh wait never no, mind my uh buzz uh yeah maybe in your neighborhood <laughs> my buzz light ear um lightsaber was showing let's just say that so some so anyway, going on. Okay. um so i snuck out after i gave my speech which was also by the way a roaring success I, i'm i'm proud of you and so right beforehand my stepdaughter's looking at oh and we also got her a, a cowboy hat like a woody hat to put on you know well uh, that before. jamie when i was telling her your plan she goes well how, how come he's not woody and i was like Look at the shape of Woody. <laughs> Look at Buzz's shape. Oh, I see. And, and then it began. I'm not saying oh, you're fat. Oh, Woody is tall and, and you know. I see. see. You know. You're We're a much fat. better Buzz Lightyear. We're going to fat shame now. I get it. Uh, no, it's, it's, okay. not a, it's a shape shame. It's okay. So anyway, um, she's walking around going, where's Scott? Oh, my God. He's supposed to be here. He's supposed to be here. And this was in, it was very cold Saturday here. I don't know, for those of you that don't notice, no. And so this was out on a farm. So I went out into the parking lot and literally changed in the parking lot into with this costume watching. Uh, with cows on my uh, <laughs> other son-in-law because he had to cinch me up because, okay. you know, it's a Velcro back. And help me put my wings on. So um, <laughs> anyway... Yeah, they have help putting your wings on. That's great. Yeah, dude. It, it, I, this is I, I know. an intricate costume. So anyway. Oh, um, yeah. So she ends her dance with her husband, and she's looking for me. And so the whole dance floor is empty. Everyone's watching the stage, and I walk into the tent and do the whole put my arms on my thing like this, <laughs> and everyone just busts into laughter, right? <laughs> And she busts into laughter, crying. She's like, what on earth? You know, <laughs> but she thought it was great. And uh, we danced like that. And then I stayed dressed like that, believe it or not, for about 45 minutes. That was going to be my question. How long did the costume do uh, photos and stuff? Yeah, okay. um, so and a lot of her friends that I've known since they were middle schoolers, you know, that's awesome. Um, what a good sport you are, sir. And and then I was telling all the girls, you know, once you've had a space ranger, you don't go back. So um, <laughs> and they all ran away. Yeah. So yeah, I was creepy Buzz Lightyear at a point, but you know, uh, so that's the uh, that's pretty awesome. That's the Buzz Lightyear story, and that's that's pretty awesome. So cool. Uh, you watch any movies? You know what I have, and I didn't put anything here, but it's nothing you would watch. Wait, you whoa. The answer is almost always no, so I'm excited. What did you watch? I watched a Prime Video series, Reacher, which oh, is I've been, uh, Jack okay. Reacher based on those novels. Yes. Which I've never read any of them. And uh, it was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. I, I watched all nine episodes. I so. just, you powered through all nine? Yep. Cool. And, you and the it. night before the wedding, it was about one o'clock and I had two more to go. You kept and going. I had to force myself, no, 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 go to bed because <laughs> you have to get up in four hours. And uh, what's the general premise of that show for people who don't know? Well, Jack Reacher, and, and there were, I guess, there were a lot of people that read the books that were mad when they cast Tom Cruise in the two movies because Tom Cruise is so short. Yeah. And Jack Reacher is supposed to be this big giant of a guy. Okay. He kind of wanders and solves crimes and stuff, I guess. Is okay. the, you know, and um, so this guy definitely looked the part. I mean, he was huge. He was just gigantic. So there were some good violent fight scenes like you would like. And a few little plot twists here and there. And, you know, so um, cool. I enjoyed it. So, yes, I watched Reacher. I, I like, like that's a lot of watching something. 
Were you not feeling well? Like you were laid up or? You know what? I, I saw some of the clips on YouTube and it just kind of piqued my interest. So I said, all right, I'll give it a try because I've got Amazon Prime and I'll check it out. Awesome. And for uh, all you James Bond fans out there, all the James Bond movies are now on Prime if you have Amazon Prime. So you can watch all of them. All of them. Yes. Oh, cool. We get to watch that Timothy Dalton one. The best one. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, I know. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, although I didn't hate the Timothy. I have not seen a single Pierce Bronson one because I just thought they all look stupid. Really? I thought that's like everybody's next favorite compared to uh, Sean Connery. But whatever. What do no, I know? My next favorite was Roger. Uh, not Roger. Ryan hey, I, did you? I sent you that er, that uh, Robin Hood lunchbox. That was a no? Just because you don't like lunchboxes? Yeah, I don't do lunchboxes. And it wasn't really like a movie related lunchbox. That but... wasn't from the movie. It was from the no. same. It was like. It was from the 30s. Wasn't it? Or... Yeah. I, I don't know. All right. Yeah, no. Anyway, I watched the new Hellraiser. Uh, and let me ask you this, and I know the answer is going to be no, but I got to ask you. Have you seen Hellraiser? No. Hellraiser 2? No. Any Hellraiser? No. Well, no. I'm kind of a Hellraiser. Yeah, that's true. I was going to say. So, do, I mean, you know the general premise of the... of. The... I know nothing. I know there's some stupid box. Did you read Hellbound Heart? Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you read over the there book. In my bookcase. Maybe you read the book. I don't know. Um, so Hellraiser has been... I have the Hellraiser movie poster in the other room. Hellraiser is one of my movies. Like, it wasn't on my... Because we didn't do horror when we did our big list. But my first garage kit I ever did, and the box is still sitting right there, is the pinhead from Screaming. And I love Hellraiser. The first two were amazing, and they remade it. This is not a sequel. This is a reboot, if you will. Um, it's okay. I'll leave it at that. It is. Well, I won't leave it at that. There's a lot of missed opportunities. Um, I don't know if you heard anything about. Have you heard anything about this reboot, Scott? Only from you. Okay, so we're gonna try and not get. <laughs> Our channel closed down here. So I'm going to try and skirt around some of the issues. Jamie Clayton is now a pinhead. Jamie Clayton is a female, which means pinhead is now female. Jamie Clayton is also trans. So technically, depending on where you stand on things, whatever. My problem with it is, is they made her female for the movie. Where to me, and even if you read, go back to the book, Pinhead was listed as androgynous as a description. So to me, that's David Bowie. That's you could go either way. To me, and I like the first ones, what they did. This, I was hoping they went more. It's so weird. You don't know what you're looking at because that should be something from hell. Like it's bizarre. It's crazy. And this just looked like a chick Pinhead. And even in some of the long, and people who have seen the movie, there's some really long distance shots of, of this actress as Pinhead. And it looks like a grandmother to me, just standing there waiting. Like, hello, little kids, let's go out and get some cookies. Like something like that. And it just didn't, parts didn't work. I, I, they turned the box into a weapon thing that could tag people. It was like a tag you're it. I don't know. There was a, it started off with a drug. The main character is a drug addict. I thought they could have done a lot more with that because addiction and the bot, like watch it. I'd love to hear people's thoughts on it. I kind of disappointed, which brings me to my next disappointment. Have you read interview with the vampire? No, I saw the first horrible movie with Brad Pitt. And yeah. So that movie's not good. And I'm sure I'm bothering. There's parts that are okay but it's not great. It is not like the book. And I was having this conversation with somebody else. Lord of the Rings over here. Interview with the vampire over here. The book changed my life. That whole book series. Like, read them all up until the more recent ones. But they changed this one too. 
read them oh. all up until like the more recent. Like, there's been a couple that came out recently that I have not gotten around to. I have them. What? Time, time, time. How did the book change your life? It did. It okay. It changed my life. It changed the way I thought about some things that I can't. I don't really want to go into here. The because again of YouTube. I see. But vampires have sex with everybody in, in this in the like it is not a well they did in that first movie too didn't right they, right and that's part of it. and all that and mm-hmm. this is where, where my big disappointment with the show so the interview with the vampire originally was set right before around like civil war time louis was a slave owner ran a plantation and that was a big part of the book is that him and lestat were white devils feeding off the and that's what the slaves called them in in the book they were the white devils and they're feeding off the slaves and doing like, you know, and got ran out of town and the slaves burned down the, the, the plantation, like crazy, like stuff that could have been really well done. It wasn't really well done in the original movie. And in this, they said, Nope, we're not doing that. And they moved it up to like 1910. And Louis is now quote, I'm a gay black man, unquote, which is fine, but it's like, so on the nose. And for right now, that it's like, why, like, hmm. I, it, it, took, it took me right out. Does, uh, does Louis pay two guys to beat him up and. No. And, uh, <laughs> take a stake in his heart or something? No. No, okay. Not yet. No, I don't know. Okay. Who knows? Maybe it does. And so they kind of take the original and twist some things, and it just. Claudia looks like she's not going to be a small child, which I get anymore. Because of the, you'll run into the Walking Dead problem, where the kid grows too fast for a multi-year plan, and if it's a vampire, the kid can't get old, so you kind of have to cast someone older. But I will say this: the person playing Les, Lestat is really good, so that's the one reason I'm going to stick around. Because that's when I really the books that I like are more Queen of the Damned and Memnock and some of the older ones. But ugh, it was like one of those. I wanted them to do a treat Game of Thrones treatment with my favorite book series and their Lord of the Rings is getting messed up right now. Interview with the vampires getting messed up right now. Everybody hey, sh- Lord of the Rings getting messed up. That's like saying, Oh, this turd's getting smellier. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's shitting on my favorite things lately. So anyway, giveaway. We have a giveaway this episode, Scott. Do we? We do. I'm still waiting to mail one of them out. Yeah, we have, we uh, you know what? You know what we forgot to do right away. Voicemail. If you'd like to leave us a voicemail, it's seven zero eight eight one six forty two ninety nine. And if you would like to send us an email, monoclubtv at gmail dot com. That's where you send it. Monoclubtv at gmail dot com. Also, we have a Discord channel. The link for that is below. And we have one more thing to share after this. Uh, also. If you want to submit things for the gallery at the end, that also goes to the email. Yes, please send those to the email. Uh, I just had another mini stroke. Hmm. Giveaway. There was something else besides giveaway. Anyway, I'll figure it out. All right. We have a stack, and by a stack, I mean a lot, of minifigures from Jamie Sy. He gave back to us at Wonderfest, and we've been kind of hanging on to them. So these will be given away on our Halloween show. And we're going to separate these into two packs. They'll be giving away two groups of a bunch of figures. So I just want to go through real quick. These are amazing. I think anyone who's painted them can say how can legit say how fun they are to paint and pretty easy. So just, I'll just pull this out. They're about this big. We have Jason Voorhees. Okay. They're about that big, easy paint ups, beautifully printed by Jamie. And we'll have to get the sculptor's name up here too. Forgot who did it. So let's go through the group. We have Jason Voorhees. And I'm not going to take the rest out of the bag. Jason Voorhees. Beetlejuice. Another Jason Voorhees. A Hellboy. We have doubles of some of these. Another Hellboy. A Mummy. A Dracula. A Wolfman. Oh. Michael Myers. Oh. Jack from The Shining. 
Dracula from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh oh, I dropped. <laughs> Nosferatu. Frankenstein's monster. And finally, a bride of Frankenstein. So I'm going to divide these up into two groups. Maybe try and keep the universal ones together. And have the other one be the more modern horror pack. So if you're interested in winning a group of minifigures, much in the vein of some old Tiny Terror stuff, or that guy, what's his name? Remember the guy that used to do those little character caricature, like Sculpey guys? He would always be at Wonderfest. In some of the Mike horror Hart. conventions. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember those? Mike Hart? No, other, there was another guy that did all these little figures. Someone will know who I'm talking about. It wasn't Mike Parks, but he was, it was in the same kind of... They were like this, but kind of... like it, He'd sculpted them one off. They weren't cast. So we have that. So if you'd like to win the minifigure set, minifig in the comments will get you there. Minifigure, minifig, get you there. We'll have two drawings for that for next time. Cool? Sound good? And our winner from the Jason Voorhees, if you're listening, please email us <laughs> at modelclubtv at gmail.com. We want to get that to you. So are we going to give it away? Up. Yep. Or we're going to re, if we don't hear from you by the end of this next couple of weeks, we're going to relist it. Okay. News I'm and reviews. I find that Scott. guy's name, but I can't. I have a... It was like Nikolai something, or wasn't yeah. it? Or... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. News and reviews, Scott. You ready? No. You got to make your noise. I'm not ready. Oh. Because aren't we going to talk about something new after the giveaway? Yeah, that's, that's that goes into news. Oh, news and reviews. Okay. News and reviews, Scott. All right, here we are. We have a uh, people have been asking for this for a while. <laughs> Scott, break the news. We have a store. We have two stores. Two stores. We have two stores. So right now there is a T-shirt available with many different options. There is. Let me kind of walk people through it. We have a Redbubble store and we have a Teespring store. Both links will be down below. So. Figure out what you, if you would like to buy a shirt, it will greatly help us out and we would really appreciate it. This is how we're going to try and fund some of the shipping costs that we send out and cameras maybe eventually and some other things. So um, right now there's just the t-shirt with well winners design and there's a sticker on, if you would like the sticker, it's on Redbubble. The best mug version is on Teespring, but there's mugs on both. They're so, magnet. And Redbubble too. There is a uh, Redbubble has magnets and some other, and mouse pads, I think. Mm -hmm. And then um, some of the better, uh, it's the better mug. If you would like the cool, mug, it's all black. On is on Teespring. So and look through it. I want to speak of mugs. I want to thank Tony uh, Cipriano for for uh... <laughs> for modeling for us. <laughs> Using his mug to model. Yeah, for us. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna kill me. That's <laughs> oh well. It'll, by the time he watches it, we'll be long gone. So, Not dead. I mean, like, the episode will be out. I don't um, even have these shirts yet. Yeah, me either. I think Redbubble <laughs> 2 has more options. They do. For higher quality shirts. and There's higher quality on Teespring as well. It's just different styles. So gotcha. kind of look through both sites. See what you want. Check the prices. Look, the prices are kind of set out of our control. We can change them a little bit, but not much. So. We talked about trying to make it as cheap as possible. I think there is, I think Redbubble has the cheapest shirt. If you want to, you know, get the cheapest one, that's where to go. So, yeah. And so everyone knows we're not going to get rich on this at no. all. We're <laughs> barely going to cover anything, but yeah, we might get, I think it's like between $5 a shirt to $10 yeah. a shirt, like depending on what it is. So, but they're out there. It's, they're out there. Something. And people have asked for them. So I think it's pretty cool. And thank you, Well, for the awesome design. And the links will be below. There you go. All right, Scott. You're up. Well, speaking of Well, <clears throat> and I've shown this before, but this is um, Well's Top Cat. And this is painted by our friend Phil Kuka. Nice. And there's a little story behind this. Uh, I think Phil and his wife 
just celebrated their wedding anniversary and Top Cat was her favorite uh, cartoon character. So Phil got a hold of me, asked if I could print one up, and uh, he painted it up for Diane, his wife. That is and a great paint is. job. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's really nice. So and so everyone knows Phil paints completely by brush. So um, I re- it looks very cartoony, like it's done. Nice. That pole with the phone box back there, or whatever that is, mm-hmm. that looks like straight cartoon. And so, kudos to Well's sculpting ability too. But yes. man, that's great. So there you go. All right. Want me to keep going? I'll keep yes, going. sir. Keep going. Okay. Mr. Jeff Yeager has now done Aurora replace one eighth scale Aurora pro series. Number four replacement heads for Aurora models. He's got the next set of four and it is the second mummy. This one based on the Karloff mummy where the first one I believe was the Cheney mummy, uh, a Colin Clive doctor, a zombie, and another uh, Frankenstein. And the zombie is actually, it's uh, Peter Cushing from uh, Ghost Mood. There you go. Crip. So you can contact Jeff on Facebook or or uh, Facebook Messenger. Uh, $89 plus shipping for the four. And um, there they are. Is, is this the last set? set? Or is this? No idea. Okay. He's on a roll. He is on a roll. Excellent. Okay, the next. Oh, is, that's awesome. I, think, I hadn't I seen we, this. I think we previewed this, though, um, or a picture of it. This is going to be the first um, Gilbert release. And it's Dutch uh, from the movie Predator, which I have seen. How about that? I, I am impressed. Okay. And um, I'm more impressed with this mud job. That is Paul Gill's paint job. I, Paul. That's what I was going to do if I got it. That is perfect. So um, that's awesome. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Oh, and so cool. Here's some pictures of the sculpt with the base. And I believe I could be wrong. But I believe that nameplate was um, done in 3D and then incorporated into the sculpt. So, yeah, I think um, so. but uh, there it is. And if we're wrong, be nice about it. <laughs> Paul said he's like, not even correcting us anymore. He said, I'm not the heck with you guys. You're numb skulls. I'm not let even us, no, let I, us do our Gonzo awesome. production here. Uh, it's such a great sculpt. And think that like that worked so well. So excellent. Um, well done, those guys. Well, speaking of well again, well winners. Got a couple uh, coming out here. This is Scooter from the cartoon. Space Cadets, K I D. And I don't remember watching this. I've never but, seen I don't know what this is at all. I've never seen either, but of course it's it's cartoony and it's well and um beautiful. It's beautiful. And then he decided to add to his best selling Groovy Ghoulies line. And there's two versions available. And I think the one is on his Patreon is his diorama. Okay. This is Batso and Ratso from the Groovy Ghoulies. And these are the kids that were always in the mischief in the Groovy Ghoulies. You know, the characters that nobody liked. <laughs> but anyway, uh, here they are. Um, and again, another, you know, cool little diorama there. And while we're on the subject of dioramas and our friend Well Winner, this is another diorama he's got here. Um Scooby Doo and Shaggy, and there's Scrappy in the front. You know he's a, he's gonna go fight, I guess. Um, this is an awesome diorama, but man, so, that's a lot of resin. I was just gonna say, is there more plans for things to go on this base, or is it like I don't know? There, well, does have a Scooby Doo set that I'm sure you could size appropriately and put some of them on okay. there if you wanted. And uh, there's the parts breakdown. And I may have to get on him about the base a little bit and say, hey, man, you're going to have to quarter that base. But um, yeah, we'll see. I wanted it mainly for the Scooby Shaggy. Yeah. There was a free paint that just came out of that same exact thing that they want, like, an outrageous amount of money for. And um, so it's like, oh, cool. He did it. I was going to ask him to do it, and he did it. So 
There you go. And then he also today, right before we recorded, gave me a little sneak peek of uh, another piece he's doing, the Care Bear or the Hair Bears. What's the Hair Bears? I think I remember this. Yeah, that was they came out in the 70s, so it was a little after my time, too. Yeah, I think I remember um, seeing this. Probably something you would watch. You would probably yeah. think it was uh, These are more of the uh, Urban Dread Kit from Gilbert. And I don't think I was able to share these last time, but these are the Judge D-Word upgrade parts that you'll be able to put on there. Uh, again, making an even cooler kit, or even a cool kit even cooler. Uh, awesome. I love that they're adding all these little parts that you can stick on and, and customize it. And he did say, Paul did say that there's going to be bases that hold the extra part. So hmm. pretty cool. Well done. And then from Typhon, correct? Because I always get you're the one three, to put it on here. So. I know, but I get these three things messed up: Gilbert, Paul Gale, Typhon. Typhon. It's Typhon. Okay, Mike and Calvert. not Jaeger Army. So this is a Typhon release. It is the uh, the Werewolf of London. Yes, and sculpted by Jeff Jaeger, and pretty cool. Yeah, it is a really nice likeness. Really nice likeness. Really nice likeness. Um. And then I think we shared last week. And I want to say thank you to uh, iPhone Studios, Mike Calvert, for using the Discord and putting his release, his actual kit releases on there in the new kit section. So thank you. Wow. And uh, CG put his uh, Couton printing jobs up there too. Um, thank you for that. Uh, if anyone wants to just get on the Discord, there's a new kit section. You want to throw your stuff in there with information? It helps us. It helps you. <laughs> helps us find stuff a little easier because that's where I found these and I didn't have to go hunt them down. So thank you. And we and showed this Frankenstein. We didn't? showed this last time, but again, it was in there. I just wanted to again just double up on it since it was in the Discord and use it again. So another look at the base. Uh, it's the Frankenstein from Bride of Frankenstein, correct? Yeah. Well, you're on yeah. top of your game. I am. Sculpted by Jeff Yeager. Wow. Wow. All right. This next group of stuff, it's all from monstrous masterpieces, which I saw on my own. And then I kind of had some people send them to me and it's, I'm going to, I'm probably slaughtering his name, Adam Chiet. And Adam, you got some cool stuff here. I'm going to reach out to you after the show and let you know we're, we're sharing your stuff, but they got this cool witch kit that is six and a half inches tall. It comes with some hair bits to uh, customize it. I love a good witch. It's a witching season here. There should be a model club exclusive where you get a chunk of Jason's beard to put on the witch for the hair. I could, I'll just go on my brush and pull hair out and send yeah. it to people. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that for... That's not a bad idea. Uh, witching hours at hand or in your hands. Paint up our frightful witch. She comes with simulated hair for a finishing touch. Halloween. Esmeralda the Wicked. So, very cool. Nice, simple piece. It's like 35 bucks, I want to say. Some pretty cheap when I look at I know, it. You know, the price looks like it was on that one photo, but you I know, it but up. it's cropped, yeah, because I had the issue with the computer. Uh, and then they also have these new wall hangers, creature from the Black Lagoon wall hanger, which I really like. Yeah, actually, really like that. I want to cool. say that was eighty five, but I'm not sure. I think I, I have the it. info over there, but I'll put all the information, the links down below. They have a creature from the wall. Black creature from the wall. <laughs> creature from the Black Lagoon wall hanger. A Martian wall hanger, which is that's a cool looking alien with the forearms, mm -hmm. menacing face. There's a great paint up of the face online if you can find it. Uh, I may I'll put up here too. Um, you have it up here. Do I? In this? In this? Yep, it's yeah. there. You put it with Frankenstein. I put something. it with Frankenstein. And there's Frankenstein's monster as well. So check out Monstrous Masterpieces. We'll have all their information up there. And very cool. So what'd you get? Let's do you first. We're going to do some live unboxings. You go first. Age before beauty. Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Been eyeing this for a while. Okay. And, um... When our friend, our good friend over at Cult TV Man okay. Shop.com. Um, now I gotta focus myself back in here. Um, when I found out that he got these finally, 
These are limited edition soft vinyl 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 kits. Soft. It's catchy. What do you mean? <laughs> soft vinyl model kits. Okay. Yeah. Great Harry Housen Cyclops, one eye giant creature. Well, I think that would go with Cyclops, but what do I know? Um, it's put up by X Plus and Soft Vinyl. I don't know why they call it Soft Vinyl. I never understood that either. Because maybe like hard vinyl, like a record? Is that hard? I don't vinyl? know. These pieces are, I can't even squeeze this piece. So this is one of the pieces I want to show, just the fur detail. And they're pre trimmed. So there's no traditional vinyl trimming, I don't think. Really? I think they just go together. I'd have to take... So it all comes bagged. Oh, you're not going to take it out of the bag, are you? I don't want to take it out of the bag. But they, it all comes individually bagged, except for the club. The club comes, and it's a different color vinyl, but it comes Dang, in this little... That. Okay. And, um, I mean... I just like the way it's packaged. So here's the hooves, which I wish I had a hoof. Here it is. <laughs> okay. Um, the arms. The detail though. Yeah, that's great fur texture. Like Okay. Um got the hands. We should have a Cyclops episode. And then check this out. You ready? The eye, and I don't know how you can see it. I'm gonna move around me, but the eye is painted. Looks like he's suffocating. There so it is. it's painted, so you have to mask it off. Yeah, and the jaw moves. Okay. So you can pose the jaw just like you can any other Cyclops vinyl kit that you own. And um, 100 bucks. 109 bucks, maybe. Uh-oh, you're out of focus. Again. I'm coming back. Hold on. Coming back. There he is. Almost. Okay. There you go. 109 bucks, I 109? think, from, from Cult. He's also going to get the Retosaurus. I think he's got one of the other ones that are out now, the Allosaurus, maybe. And um, I, these are awesome. I, these, these are really, really, really nicely done. Now, they're coming out with a Styrene one as well. Which I have that which I will get, yeah. Which I will get to, the Cyclops. But this is just, this was just really nice. It says it's 12 inches tall. I kind of measured it maybe to be taller, but... Okay. Either I way, have the, the Kraken on pre-order from Sideshow. I do too Sideshow. for um, Matt. Yeah. Uh, wanted it, so I picked it up for him. He paid me, but... Um, yeah, it's from when my uh, Sideshow piece was broken. They gave me a $100 gift certificate thing. Oh, that's okay. Why, that's why I was like, ah. And did box. you see the size of that thing? No. Pretty big? Yeah. Yeah, they always... Sideshow always does this little thing where they... Show what the piece is next to a oh, normal yeah, size did, person did, did. with the apple. I I'll and, put it next. Uh, I still have my original toy from the movie, like the plastic. Oh, okay. I'll put it next to that. So I did see that though, and it's um really cool. And this thing just comes packaged beautifully. And again, come on, top, open it up. Be it, like, top this, like open it. Notch service from our good friend Steve Iverson at Cult TV. Man, I pretty much buy all my new styrene from him now. And, um, you know, just cause he's, he's one of us, you know, yeah. and, and speaking of Steve, he did this video. He had to build a, a, um, glow vampirella for a show. So he does this video cause he wanted to leave the skin glow, but paint the rest. So his, his <laughs> catch word was quick and dirty paint job. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And. After I got done watching the video, I was like, this should have been a quick and dirty drinking game. Every time he said quick and dirty, you should have to drink <laughs> because he was going. But it was kind of fun to watch, you know, Steve uh, paint that quick and dirty. And uh, then he showed pictures from the show he was at recently. And there was the quick and dirty Vampirella, the glow Vampirella. So. But, go, um, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that Cyclops is nice. So I have the geometric one. I don't have the Billiken one. I don't have a lot of Cyclops. We should I'm telling, we should have a Cyclops episode. And go through the top 10 best Cyclops kits. There's 10. There's got to be 10, right? Mm, 
five? Want to do the top five? No. I don't think there's... Well, there's a few out there. So I have the Mike Maddie. My favorite... I'll put a... I'll, try, I'll go take a picture of it. So I have the Mike Maddie one, which is really nice. But then I have mine. It's the Ral Partha miniature of the Cyclops that I got when I was like in fifth grade. And it was the first miniature I ever had my mom use her... Like, used to get the catalog in the mail. And, I'm like, and my mm-hmm. mom had to use her credit card for me to order it. And I waited for weeks for it to show up. And it was I, a little Cyclops. I'll, I'll go take a picture and I'll put it here. But that was yeah. one of my first miniatures way back when. Well, I've had a chance to have the Billiken, but then I got the Geometric. Yeah. And the nice thing about the Geometric is, and the Billiken, I think, came with two heads. So the Cyclops had... One of them had two horns, mm-hmm. one of them had one. This one only has one, so I don't have to go through that agonizing, how am I going to build it? But uh, um, That's cool. I'm glad that piece turned... I, ooh, I want to... Uh, no, I'm anxious to see the styrene kit, too. Yeah, so. that looks really nice as well. Uh, I want to go back to monstrous masterpieces real quick. They have a Batman. He has a Batman bust as well. I'm going to throw that in right here. So again, check out Monstrous Masterpieces. Adam Chiet. Well, yeah, I saw those. Gotham's um, Protector. Yeah, I saw those in the photos. I noticed they didn't make our yeah, little slideshow. For some reason. Well, I know the reason. I know the reason. You deleted it so you could blame me for it later. You're trying you know, to drive me crazy. You're one of those guys. You were so worried about putting pictures, trying to embarrass me. No, those were the when first When all ones I was in. doing is a nice thing. I'm not trying to embarrass okay. you. I'm not trying right. to embarrass you. Uh, my kit, which I got from Paul Lazo at Amok Time. Amok Time also sells the Cyclops, yep. by the way. So both those guys. Uh, this showed up really easy and perfect condition. No crinkles in the box. Everything is great. And look at this, Scott. Does this hurt your feelings? I'm unwrapping. No. No, because you'll drop half of it. I probably will. I need something to focus. So this, I've seen a lot of stuff. Like, other people have posted some videos of this. Why can't I open it? Please tell me this is a rhetorical question. No. It's not. Scott, why can't I open it? Oh. Well, because you're not using the proper tool. What's the proper tool? An exacto knife. I am. Now you are. That's not an exacto knife. Is it a razor blade? Same thing. Yeah, I'm surprised you even know what one is. I love this box. I just want to start with that. It's so art deco y and just box goodness. Let's try this. Uh. So it was at this point during the editing process that I realized the audio cut out during this section when I switched the camera. Uh, There was an update to a couple things, and I think it kicked off the uh, microphone selection, and I did not notice it because I was looking down instead of at the screen. So this is the first time I'm trying to do a voiceover on one of our videos. So this what we are, I was, you know, I'm going to have to cut this shorter than I wanted to, but this is the maria kit from x plus it is a really nice fancy matte gold and it's you know i think around one eighth scale Uh, it probably says on the box but i put that away already and i don't remember what i read and what i talked about here so uh there there is a lot of cool uh light areas and i'm hoping someone makes a light kit lighting kit for this so the lights would shine up onto maria um there is a seated version coming out again. I got this from a muck time uh, called TV man sells it as well. But Paul Lazo is a great guy over there. If you want to order some stuff from them, it came beautifully packed and no, no issues with the box. If you're a box purist, but great little kit. Uh, I, again, I apologize for the audio issue. Let's see if this actually works and how dumb it is. Cause maybe I can do this in the future and, you know, make fun of Scott post recording. And he won't even know I'm doing it. But, yeah, there's the uh, gray plastic seat. And there's quite a few sprues that come with this kit. And there's all the little lighting pieces, the little light caps um, that go on the base that shine up towards the robot chick. Android. 
cyborg, whatever it is at this point. Uh, the instructions look amazing. It's the artwork on them is pretty cool. It uh, looks, you know, kind of like your typical old style uh, model kit instructions and a, a great bonus to the kit. So I'm going to fade this out here right at about this point. So again, <laughs> I apologize. and I'll talk to you next episode. All right, Scott, what else we got? That's news and reviews. Um, that's all I got. Yeah, that's all I got too. So I have an on the road segment. You drove somewhere, right? Didn't you drive all the way to Georgia? Yes. Did you stop at any hobby shops on your way? No. How come? My wife was with me. <laughs> You couldn't just say, hey, we got to stop for the show. Well, you know, Jason does do. these segments where he takes pictures around the world. Oh, I mean, around the country at different hobby stores. I'd like to, you know, contribute, work on the mm -hmm. content. So you couldn't even stop nowhere? Nothing? I probably could have, but I didn't think of it. <laughs> what I wanted to do, though, is when we went through uh, Metropolis, Illinois, I did want to go take a picture of me with the Superman statue. See, why didn't um, you do that? And they have a museum, too. That might have been fun, but... Was it... What time of day were you going through there? Yeah, that's the thing. It was like 5 o'clock, so I think... Uh, everything was closed. We were uh, done. Yeah. I'm still unboxing here. <laughs> still unboxing? Unbagging. Uh... Uh, I just real quick, I got four pictures <laughs> over the weekend. I went to a convention. I went to the North American reptile breeders convention and I'll throw some pictures up here. If you're really interested in reptiles and insects and this is the place to go. Great. Great. You have to be rich though. $5,000 baby snakes, stuff like that. Ball pythons. Leopard geckos. I bought some roaches to feed to my lizard. So we have a uh, so so you get the gourmet roaches that they're yeah, they are actually show, right? they're called dubia roaches and they're uh, not your typical roaches like I have at work. They're the roaches that are uh, they look they're like they use them in movies and stuff sometimes. So, but it's a cool little show, nice little show. Actually, it's huge. Think of wonder. It's at the Tinley Park Convention Center. So think of like Wonderfest rooms and add on like. Four more, five more. That's how big that thing is. Workbench, Scott. That's why, it's, uh, listeners, viewers, this is a this this episode came up. I have my Saturn vat that I have to replace the FEP on. Oh, did you p build anything? Did you paint anything? No. Oh camera fell of course it did no i've been a little preoccupied and then now i'm injured i'm lucky to even be doing this show oh, you were on your standing feet, here so on my bad achilles tendon oh i'm so sorry man by the way has everybody noticed i'm wearing like a reddish mauve? it's mauve yeah it's mauve actually it is mauve. very good and um yeah the art teacher knows his colors Probably couldn't spell mauve, but M A U V E. Is it? <laughs> Just kidding. fucking idiot. Uh, we uh Saturday night had a little uh Discord hobby hangout. So again, we're still doing those Saturday nights. Uh, Jamie Sai was working on his uh Hulk. Uh, Scott Lucabill was there working on like 10, 10, 15 different things. And uh, Brian Clark was working on what was Brian working His on? His toenails, probably. Yeah, probably. He was working on a few different things as well. We were talking spaceships and yeah, it was, Mom it was is M A U V E, by the way. I know. I was kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you weren't. Uh, I was working on my Skaven still. So I'm still skate painting my Skaven uh, Blood Bowl team. And I have some other stuff I'm working on. Uh, Venom is pr reprinted, ready to go. And I printed a base for somebody, for Brian, actually. For the Superman, Batman versus Superman kit. There's the base. This is a Jupiter-sized base. And that is not the whole base, is it? 
This is the whole base. Oh, that is the whole base. That okay. Whole base. I didn't cut it. And uh, printed a couple other things. But yeah, been building a lot of stuff. Speaking of the Jupiter, you got your new stuff. I did. Mine so I don't know. Did I mention it last time? I, I had a problem with the VAT. So everyone who got a Jupiter from Elegoo, it looked like what we kind of determined with the help of Elegoo and help of people on the boards is that the VATs have a black powder coat on them. And I don't think mine was baked long enough. And the powder coat was coming off in the resin. So you would see like black paint basically floating through the resin and chips and stuff. So everybody kind of double check your resin. The new one that I got is fine. And I haven't opened the other one. That was the replacement well, one. And what's that. interesting or what's hard about that is if you use gray resin, it breaks up. So there are black swirls in it. Yeah. But these are like, I know what you're talking about, but these are like black. Like you can so tell it was like black. Somebody posted today, they got a Saturn S and a big old paint chip came off of their vat as well. Really? So maybe yeah. they're having trouble with their yeah, power. I wonder what's going company. on. Yeah. Interesting. Because most of it started. So on, on the back of the Jupiter, there's a place where you put the bottle upside down and kind of screw it in. So it's an auto fill. And that was scraping off the paint like no, like no tomorrow. And then it just started wiping off everywhere with alcohol, with resin, with water. At like, so everybody double check your vat. If you haven't opened it yet, I would just make sure it's okay. Um, even if you have a Saturn II. Ooh, that's, that's scary. That's so does your tomorrow. automatic feed work now? I haven't tried it yet. I'm too scared. <laughs> Um, cause I just had enough to do that, but, uh, I think that's it for work. Ben. I am painting stuff, just not stuff that people want to see, uh, emails, voicemails and corrections. If you'd like to send us a voicemail, Scott, I forgot to hit all the buttons again for type Gilbert. Oh my God. Monoclubtv at gmail.com. Send us an email. And if you'd like to leave us a voicemail, it is 708-816-4299. All right. You want to do the voicemail first? Sure. Well, the Joker called us again. Yes, I guess Scott doesn't want a visitor at his home. So I decided we'll go on a road trip. Me and Harley. A long road trip. Well, you can eat those delicious, disgusting McDonald's hamburgers. You are what you eat, Scotty. If you only knew the secret ingredients to those burgers, besides lifting in trails. <laughs> wow. The Joker and his uh, Harley Quinn are eating some burgers. Yeah. I sounds know more like Troc like, every is, day. Yeah, it sounds more like Troc every day, too. Uh-huh. I think we're on to him. All right, official emails. So I made a mistake last episode and forgot an email. Can you believe that? But <laughs> but I got his pictures in to the gallery. Guys, there's a lot of moving parts to this show. Sometimes I miss things. I'll get it in eventually. Send me a reminder, but a nice one. Good afternoon, Jason and Scott. This is from David Horvath. Good afternoon, Jason and Scott. Lois and I had a great time hanging out with everyone at the barbecue. Thank you both for putting that together. We made some new friends and got to see some old friends, friends, which is always a treat. My wife had such a good time. She was asking if we could make, make Wonderfest a family outing again this year. She was also blown away over. Oh no. She was also blown over by Scott's collection. I don't think she will ever say another word about the size of my model stash. LOL. We hope this becomes an annual event, sharing stories with others in the hobby is something I've missed since the old days of the clubhouse, Gremlins, and the Polar Lights board. I hope this podcast and other venues for this group can lead to more work, can lead to more of that sense of community where we seem to have lost with everyone leaving the web groups or Facebook. Keep up the great work and let us know what we can do to help promote you guys. Big Daddy Dave Horvath. He's not that big. Big Daddy Dave. No, my no. dog just polluted me <laughs> so thank you dave yeah we are planning on uh it is going to be an annual event mm -hmm. we're doing it again 
Yeah, but Jason won't be touching the spatula. I can tell you that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I will. Because it'll be at my house. And I'll drip everywhere and not care. I'll drip everywhere, too. Yeah, you will, old man. Uh, This is from Peter R. Fortunato. It's kind of a long one. Bear with me. Greetings, Model Club TV. And Scott, I don't want any face-making while I'm reading. (laughs) What with a concerted effort of some horror figure model kit producers and manufacturers branching out into the medieval historical genre, Blackheart comes to mind, has any kit producer thought of reissuing the Aurora Knights as threatening mounted one-six scale resin figures? One of the criticisms of the 50s Aurora Knights were the lackluster museum poses. Redoing them as one six scale mounted battle threatened battle threatened figure would, I think, spark interest into a whole new audience, historical military set, as well as our own. A main problem of this hobby right now is the growing lack of interest in subject matter of kits. How many versions of Frankenstein creature or mummy does this hobby need? I think the golden age of horror modeling is long gone and it's not coming back. I haven't seen the younger generation's presence online to get into uh, presence online in lines to get into Wonderfest for quite some time. The older horror kit producers are either getting out of the hobby or dying off, and for the most part, are not being replaced. Just look at this pa- at the past kit output of Resin Crypt and Exofacto. Gone. AFM recently came out with a military issue. Blackheart is widening their micromania line to include historical figures. This says something. If this part of our hobby is to survive, I think its model subject needs to branch out into a wider audience, like George. Hey, look, even the Beatles are reissuing all their old albums in a new remastered format to a new audience as well as their old. Maybe a remastered Mounted Knight series would get a great historical audience, a new historical audience into our figure hobby. The reason why I'm mentioning remastering the Aurora Knights into one six mounted charging figures is to take advantage of the nostalgia atmosphere of the Knights, which is already there. They came before Aurora's horror line and are still being offered on eBay. There is still interest in some set still interest some 70 years after the fact. I think I'm right. Peter Ronaldo, Fortunato, Peter, (laughs) Peter Ronaldo, Peter Ronald Fortunato. P.S. I love your show. And let's get going with the t-shirt. Christmas is coming. T-shirt solved. You can order one right now. And PPS, please send my email to anyone having an opinion on this topic. That I'm not going to do. If you want it, leave a comment. And you guys can hook up in the comments. Um, Scott, what do you think? Well, while you were reading, I jumped on CG Trader. And there are some night models on CG Trader. Um, I wouldn't call them dynamic poses and stuff, but I'm looking at one. Right now on a horse, it's pretty cool. It's like 120 pages of knights on CG Trader. So the ability to 3D print some for sure is there. And, you know, again, it comes to the reason there's so many the Aurora Knights out there. Because they didn't sell. Yeah, and that's, I was going to kind of go. You know, and... And I don't know what they even go for now, but for a long time, you could still pick those up for 10 or $15 a piece. Yeah. Some of them. So, I, you know, it, it's, I, I agree, you know, it was pre-Monster Aurora. Um, But I, I do agree with the, the bulk of what he's saying, too, which is, and I never thought I would be the one saying this, but to venture away from the genres we're also comfortable and familiar with. Okay. I mean, here we go. Prime example. Okay. Believe it or not, I have three Cyclops models, this geometrics and Mike Park's super deform. That's it. Okay. Now, oh, and Jamie, you have Jamie's super deform. And now I have Jamie's super deform. Yes. Yep. But, but, you know, now you go to Frankenstein's monster. You know, I'm over 50 of them, you know, so how many more do I need? Back to the Knights specifically, though. Mm -hmm. I think if you, I think 
this is where for garage kits, I really don't think there's enough people to support a producer. And I could be wrong making that kit. There's not enough people to support in the current group of people that are out there. No. As far as because of the, and that's what I'm saying, the genres they collect. But here's where right. I think he, where Ronaldo, he needs, Ronald needs to look is if you go over to the fantasy miniature side, yeah, they're not going to be as big. You could buy a night. There are so many different options for nights. And like you just said, I think his best bet is 3D printing is to find one on CG Trader that someone has done. I'll print it for you. You could hire me. You could hire Scott. We'll figure out a way to print it for you. Um, But I really don't think the stuff that George does Mm -hmm. is good. But I don't think we'd have to get George back on because I'd like to know how well his historical stuff sells in garage kit land. I just reviewed his Aztec warrior for AFM that should be coming out. It is a great bust. R- great. But I don't know how many guys are going to pick that up because, you know, they're Frankenstein guys or they're mummy guys. Uh, the Knights, there are so many options in terms of fantasy miniature guys. They don't even look over here anymore. The Aurora Knights, I don't think... If someone did it in plastic, that would be kind of cool. I think. Because you can do so much with plastic these days. If some company wanted to redo the Knights in a really cool plastic kit, that might be really... I don't think anyone's going to do it in resin, though. Yeah, but and the thing is, again, with the Knights, how well are these kits selling for Atlantis? You know, young kids aren't buying these monsters. I was just going to say, Atlantis. there's not okay. a kid that gives a shit about a knight in shining armor. These Like, nobody. Okay. Rarely. And... um I hate to say it, you'd have almost better luck. Oh, and this is gonna kill me. <laughs> Look at Jason's all excited. What's he gonna say? What's he gonna say? You'd have better luck doing wrestlers. Okay, like getting a WWE or F or whatever license and doing good wrestler. Not because I know there were some back in the day that were really bad, but you know, and that's just an example of something that you could get a license for that young people may or may not be interested in, you know, um, I like what X plus is doing, which is, this is also available as a prepaint. Yeah. Something that young people are interested in now video games. I know years ago, polar lights did a, um, crash bandicoot. Okay. Which was not the most popular video game character in the world. Where a Mario or a, you know something like that, all a Donkey of, Kong. Here's the thing: all of that is on is all 3D printing now. Most of yeah, 3D printing and it is, is all on 3D. You're is right. Video game. Yeah, so that's a tough call. And it's and I, and you know, we're not. I don't want to make it sound like we're shitting on this idea because I oh, think not at all because Knights I think there's awesome a market kit. like there is. I just don't think it's in garage kits anymore. Like I like. Mm. I wonder how, leave it in the comments. How many people would be interested in a night kit? I don't think in the vein of the old Aurora ones, I don't think there's a lot. No. And you're going to end up, I don't, I don't think our producer would be wanting to spend that money. Now, again, if someone wanted to do it digitally, that's a different story because that's the costs are gone. Now, if that would bring people from other genres, miniatures and historical and military and start crossing them over into what we do. That would be awesome because then that would, and that would cross us into what they do as well. Mm -hmm. Since I've been 3d printing, I forgot who did the one. um, I'm going to say it and get in trouble. Indian. That was so beautiful. Um, Do you know the one I'm talking about? It was 3d printed. Yeah. And the thing was beautiful. Like the chief, right? The Native American. Yes, yep. yes, it was beautiful. And you know, I look at something like that and say, "That's a beautiful sculpt." Is it something I would buy and paint? Well, obviously, nothing's anything I would buy and paint. But is it something I would buy? No, but I sure could appreciate it. No, there's people out there that would buy it. Yeah. So, so I don't know if we answered this question, but it's—I don't know. 
I'd like to see that stuff. I just don't. I think there's better options right now than a garage kit. So I just got these today. And this is from uh, CA3D Art. And Carlos, his name's Carlos. Yeah, Carlos Eduardo, sculptor on Patreon. If you want to look it up, it's CA3D, CA underscore 3D underscore art. I'll put a link as well. He just did these Valkyrie. Uh, and they're coming out this month on the one Patreon. It's a mounted, historical, not so much, sort of fantasy. But, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that can be done now. And if you look, like, you could do an awesome night like this. But this Valkyrie, I'm sure, would sell better than just a plain old night. I kind of right? like the Rogue, too, that he's got. Now right. that you got that, looking. Yeah, that new Rogue just came out. Awesome. Um. But I mean, it's uh, that stuff's there. I just, I don't know who's gonna. Oh, I yawned. Another screen grab for Tony. So, yeah, historical stuff. It's weird. I think you have to be. It's hard to mix. I like that George is trying, but I, I I'd love to know how they. George selling. is also going to the shows that yeah sell military things too. So. Yep. George is trying, but George is also not. And this is where George had a good vision is to expand out of the garage kit genre. Yep. And the horror genre and get into that stuff and scaling it down and scaling it down. And then by the same token, when he goes to those shows, there's the chance that someone's going to see the horror stuff and say, right. well, let me check that out too. So yep. uh, again, I've said for a while, and as far as this stuff goes, George is ahead of the curve, uh, producer wise, on a lot of this stuff. So, all right, so, there we go. Yeah, next email from Chuck Homoka. I wonder if Scott has the originals. These are the nine by twelve metal sign cert- sign certificate. Is an exact reproduction of the ones given out at hobby shops to participate. In the original Aurora Master Model Maker contest, only made of metal for long-lasting display. Uh, this eight and a half by eleven certificate is an exact reproduction of the ones given out uh, by hobby shops to participants in the contest. Collectors have been paying huge dollars for originals, and now you can own an affordable version. There is a blank space, so you can put any name on you want on the certificate. Do you have one of these? No, I never had an original. I never had a metal one either. Well, now I think you could just print it <laughs> on a piece of paper, right? And pretend like you have it if someone has a scan of it. But I'll have to check that out. I never. Um... Yeah, there's. I'll send out for you Chuck's email that has a link to it. So, yeah, look at that. Scott doesn't have it. Years ago. Do you want to yes, explain real, real quick? Explain what that's from. Well, for those of us that are not Aurora and 60s monsters literate, Famous Monsters had a contest. And so the local hobby stores were invited to participate in this contest, and the winners were going to be shown in Famous Monsters, and the grand prize winner was going to get a trip to Hollywood to meet Forrest Ackerman and blah, 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 blah. So anyway, um, the hobby stores were sent these certificates to give away as well okay and then each hobby store had a first second third they were like a vacuum form glenn strange frankenstein thing and you can get photos of these on ebay and so they got those and they gave those out and um people there have been resin castings of those available too um those go for depending if it's a first prize, second prize, third prize in the condition, those goes for a lot of money, which is going to lead me to my story years ago. I remember coming across an auction that was the box that this stuff came from, came in, right? Yeah. Had all three of them. Okay. All three of those plaques, a stack of these monster makers original. Okay. And all the rest of the store promo stuff they had to have. I think it ended up selling for fourteen hundred. It was in Kankakee, Illinois. Oh no! <laughs> okay, and it just pisses me off that something was sitting somewhere that long, right? And I didn't go find it. So, um, 
Ah, oh. yeah. I but, got kind of um, lucky in Wilmington once with an antique shop finding something, which is strange. It's right in that area. I gotta get down there more. Huh? Well, I just Scott, went through. I just went through Wilmington. Yeah. Well, hey. Nice. Got anything else? This is a short episode. Short episode. I don't um have anything else. I did. I did talk to someone. Oh, I won't say who it is. I'll tell you who it is afterward. But I did talk to someone. They gave us some critique and complained a little bit about the length of the episodes. And we realized they're long. And we've had people tell us both ways. And the majority seem to say, go longer. So, or, or stay with the long ones. Hey, we could go short. It would be easier on us because we bye. could just split it up. <laughs> no, we could just split it up. Yeah. And we could do our two hours and here's here's your episode on the 15th, here's your episode on the 30th. Yeah. And it would be a lot easier on us. So I, they're too long for I everybody. Mean, time out there. We've thought about that. Mm -hmm. But but then I think we fall behind with stuff that's come out, which magazines run into. Like we'd miss stuff. I like that it's the two weeks is hard on Scott and I, but if we didn't do it this way, we'd miss some things and we'd feel like we were behind and I don't want that to happen. Continue. Yeah, no, that that's all. So it's, you know, it, it's, and this episode will be a little shorter. I don't know how much shorter, but no interview. So, you know, again, that's the thing is you get into an interview and you talk to a guy like Tony Cipriano, Joe Ladotti, Jeff Yeager, and they get on here, you know, any anybody. I'm not just singling those guys out. And you start talking, and before you know it, an hour, an hour right. and a half is gone. Um, and a guy like Tony and Jeff and Joe, you could go on two hours, really. And it would go, and, and of course, Terry Webb would talk for like, you know, six <laughs> and a half due, hours. Terry's if due for an episode, just don't okay. heads up. Please. So it, it's, you know, what do you do? Do you want to hear the whole interview or do you want us to just edit out a lot? I try uh, to keep, and I know people are shocked that I edit. I do a lot of editing. Editing isn't just for people who don't know. Sometimes it's editing out half a second of a weird something or Scott yawning 500 times or Scott saying, okay, 500 times, or me clicking when I talk every five seconds. So you have to edit out. So that's the kind of stuff that takes a long time. It's not just making it. And then we have stuff or, that happens, you know, or Scott belching yeah. you know. or dog farts. But then we have such, such great things come in. Like my wife in the last episode who did not want to be seen. And she came in and she bashed that thing on the chair. <laughs> and then she was so worried afterwards. She goes, Oh, like, yeah, those people sent that to me and they're going to, and I like mistreated it. And I'm like, <laughs> No, they probably thought that was hilarious, which uh, he did. Yeah. So. so, yeah, we, I mean, we'll just keep doing what we're doing, which we'll try and, you know, we're conscious of it. Trust me, we are. But we feel like it's a disservice sometimes, especially with interviews, to take stuff out that we think should be in there. Which brings me to our next interview. Scott. Any luck on pushing somebody? Have you talked to that person? Oh, I, I've totally forgot. So I, oh, I'll oh. have to. Uh, we have two uh, people that we've been trying to get on. I don't want to say names. Should well, I say we got names? more than that, but we got a few. Should well, we, we got names? a few people. I'll say some names. Uh, John Dennett. That is one. Um, if Danny Sirocco. Danny Sirocco. Danny, Danny uh, Robert I think we can get. Rotundi. Uh, Trying to think. Um, I know you've reached out, uh, Mike Allen from Forbidden Zone, mm -hmm. who keeps blaming Charlie, and Charlie keeps <laughs> blaming Mike. In the meantime, neither of them are on. Uh, Let's start with John. If anyone is good friends with John Tennant, please talk him into yeah. doing it. Nudge him a little bit. Nudge so him. I've talked to him, and We've he said he would do it. But we got to nudge him. Tell him we're nice guys. We don't. I bite once in a while. Scott's. Uh, nice. Yeah. Some of these guys, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're trying to get these yeah. people. So hopefully Halloween episode. I want, you know, we'll get them. We'll make them. We should fly out there and do it. Yeah. You know what? Let's fly out, out there. That. Fly out you know, 
yeah, here's what we'll do. As soon as we sell like a zillion t-shirts, we'll, we'll have money for airplane, airplane tickets. tickets to go remote. <laughs> okay. That's not a bad idea. So yeah, all right, hey, buy up them shirts, buy your yep, wives please. one, buy your kids one. Please. Oh, hey, we, and maybe we'll have a contest of people sending us pictures of them in their model club shirts. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, honestly, that's going to help out with shipping quite a bit for stuff. And we do want some new equipment at some point. I've always, I've been thinking about. I don't. He does. Position. You, you're getting a new camera. That's <laughs> what's going to happen. Uh, we do want some new equipment. We want to. I was thinking about doing a Patreon at some point, but I don't think we're there yet. Uh, we are very getting closer and closer. Please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. We can't. There's a. We can't. We have to get monetized in order to put a link to this thing on here too. So to the shop, and we can't do that till we have about 350 more subscribers, something like that. 340. So oh, yeah. please, what are we at? Six seventy-two. We need a thousand. Did I just do math really six, fast? Six seventy-two. We need a thousand. So how many do we need, Jason? I said three seventies, three forty. Try three twenty-eight, you moron. But still, that's good. That's okay. close. So here's the thing: three forty-eight. <laughs> hold on, three forty-eight. So hold on. If just half of you just had your wives or one of your kids subscribe just they don't please. have to watch yeah, just they don't subscribe. ever have to look at it yeah. okay but if you can get in to subscribe Scott, this is uh, the evil genius of scott johansson i right. would never have thought to it, say this it's, thank you it's scott. like have your dog subscribe yes. if I you don't have multiple any, youtube accounts anybody subscribe. in your house that has a, 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 a look trust me I have people in my family that don't even watch this thing, but I say, <laughs> but I've subscribed. So yes. it's that'll help us yeah. out. Now, that being said, that just goes to show we're not good doing as well as we, we suck. Like we're doing, but, but. but there's also, and this comes up, this goes back to the email, really. How many people are out there that are garage kit guys? I think we're getting to that upper threshold. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, Terry doesn't watch rarely ever i think they were no terry will come on and say oh yeah well what was i in episode 38 what are you guys on 39 <laughs> yeah um no we're about you know <laughs> uh, i the number of subscribers oh. to afm were around a thousand when they and, went and that's like and i'm i know i'm off by a little bit but it was around there that's what we need here on youtube there's not that much mm -hmm. You know, we got to branch out. That's why I'd like to do more movie stuff. I'd like to do more miniature stuff. But and, and guys, take place in the comments on YouTube too, because yeah, that helps. Some of it is really funny. Um, <laughs> I'm just going through it now. Um, Paul Gill still believes in Bigfoot. Just so you know. Um, so do I. And Simon Ellie, I think mental defective house ape individual and the urinal floor at a short dick convention were my favorite phrases. Uh... Um. And he puts the spatula on the stainless steel sides. But, um, and he says he is Italian and doesn't talk with his hands. So we got that. Um, CG Blade had put out that he was looking for a ghost of Castel Marai or whatever. Yes. Anyway, I'm happy to report that I believe one was sent to him by uh, really? one of our good friends and um, at a reasonable price. So um, look at that. And I don't want to say who, unless they don't want to be known, but it's, uh, That's, it's, it's a good friend of the show's helped him out. We're so, making um, people happy. And you know, that being said, maybe we should in the discord, put a wanted thing. Wanted. I put a stuff for sale. Maybe I'll change the name of that to wanted, wanted and stuff for sale. Sold. Okay. Stuff wanted it's, and stuff for sale. You know, there's things, there's things you want. Um, yeah. I can tell you this. Anybody that has the first three issues of Modeler's Resource, I need them. Okay. So, you know, this would be a nice opportunity. Now, we don't want to take the responsibility if you get burned. Now, if you get burned, we'll do our best to help, but... I know um, what I want. I Just kidding. <laughs> That's great. I sure hope you edit that out. Okay. But, um, yeah, it, it's just, you know, like, I have a ton of extra. Yeah, if AF anyone wants to send me one of those. Um, <laughs> Preferably lightly used. It would be <laughs> lightly used? Like, okay. 
So, <laughs> okay. So, lightly used is better than heavily used. It's like, uh, they're still used. I'm just, <laughs> I can't believe you even I'm, went there. I'm going to edit it out just and then leave this part <laughs> in so people have no idea what we're talking about. Oh, my God. All right. We'll have um, a lip reader. Um, but yeah, I, you know, a buy and sell, I, you know, I like to hook people up with stuff. I hooked up a gentleman recently. Uh, you hooked with up with a, a gentleman? Kid. No, that's you after whiskey. Oh. So listen, you listen as good as you talk. <laughs> no. So anyway, I've got a gentleman uh, was looking for the Jaeger Maltese Falcon kit and I found him one. So that man of the people you know i i like to do that stuff uh i'm still we uh there's also two anyone that don't wants to donate kit any producer wants to donate a kit to the chiller um oh yeah please we got to do that up there's the- still time it's got to be there by halloween weekend or the weekend right you know but um yeah definitely everyone chiller model contest let's 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 hit that if we can yep. um i gotta go downstairs and go through some stuff and i have the uh, box ready to go tomorrow i think i'm gonna send mine out yeah i might not get out till the end of the week but i'll have time but it's yeah. just right now i'm supposed to be stack of prizes sitting down but uh all right so. well that's our show everybody hang in there our giveaway is from jamie Sai. some minifigs in the comments and we'll have two packs of those and maybe a bonus pulling prize yeah, what do they have to do to win those? Did you say just minifig? Just type that in there. Minifig? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, kind of boring, but it's easy, and only on the YouTube channel. In the comments, will I accept entry? So, there you go. There we go. All right, everybody, have a great couple weeks. We'll see you Halloween. Jason's birthday. I'm still waiting on my birthday gift from last year from CG Blade. You got a gift. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or was that Christmas? I don't know. I remember CG. Coming for you, CG. Coming for you. <laughs>